Hello everyone, this is Calvin Castine. We're at Northeastern Clinton Central School. It's Thursday, January 10th, 1991, and we're here for our modified A boys basketball. Northeastern Clinton Central School Cougars in the home whites being visited by the Sentinels of Ticonderoga. Tip, Justin Castein jumping for the Cougars. And number 42, Lionel Beener jumping for Ty. Also on the floor for Ty, we see 22, Nick Moore. 32. Don't have a 32 listed. That's handy. Um, we have a 34. He's uh, Marty LaRock. And 33 is Brad Catlin. And for you people who have been following Cougar action, there's a shot by Jason Tompkins, and the Cougars are on the scoreboard first. We're following Cougar action uh, when uh, Northeastern was in its infancy in the early 70s. Lee Catlin, who now is in Ticonderoga, was a co-chair, but this is not Lee Catlin's son, so we're not sure if he's even related. We thought we'd pass on that piece of non-information to you. That is, it's not Lee Catlin, in case anyone else besides myself was wondering. It's not his son. Cougars in a man-to-man. -man. Tim LeCount. Oops. Somebody wide open to center Ben. Uh, Sean LeClaire. Ryan Lucy. Jason Tompkins and Justin Castine starting for the Cougars. Coach, of course, Frank Dumas. Castein follows the shot. Tompkins rebounds. Puts it up. Cougars getting a couple shots. That hasn't always happened. Against Peru the other night, uh, the last game the Cougars played. Nice pass. Good penetration. Pass to Tompkins. It's off the mark and rebounded by Bina. 2-2 the score, 540. As we're about to say, in Peru the other night, the Cougars were not getting back. Northeastern not getting back on defense. And Peru beating them on with a fast break. Castein rebounds. As Tompkins up ahead, pass from Lucy. Tompkins will get another. Ball comes back to Tompkins. McClare gives it back to Tompkins. And foul will be on Tompkins. Knocked loose by LeCount, but Sentinels bring it up. Ranked in by 33, Catlin. 4-2, tie leading. And of course, we like to point this out periodically during these games that the win loss record isn't what's important here. Coaches try to get as many players in as they can. They're trying to groom ball players for varsity competition and uh, All the successful schools, and whenever I talk to a varsity coach, they say they're not interested in what their JV or modified win-loss record is. They have certain things that they want their younger players to learn, and it's got to be a program that's uh, got a goal at the top and not to win at this level. Tompkins puts it in. Uh, and this angle almost looked like he blocked Castine's shot. Obviously, somebody else got a hand on it. But, uh, 
fell into Tompkins' hands, and he tossed it in, and it's a 4-4 ball game. This game with a 4.30 scheduled start time. These kids coming from Ticonderoga, long haul, 90 miles back. White ball. Lucy brings it up, 3.50 remaining in the first period. Good hustle on Lucy's part, going back on defense, and he didn't foul, but he's a little nonchalant on that pass. Jump ball. Ticonderoga's turn on the jump. rebounds. Throw by the Sentinels. 305 to go in first. Basket by 32 will Try to remember at halftime to pick up who that is. Tompkins rebounds. Test time the ball. Yes. So the Cougars get the three shots. Third one goes in, and it's 6-6. It's good to see them getting some rebounds. Zwart, Racine, and Young in for the Cougars. On the baseline, number 34, Marty Larat makes it 8-6. Ticonderoga, 205 to go in the first. Racine penetrates. Young gets it in to Tompkins. Racine will toss it in. Here's to Young. Claire penetrates, tries to dish it back, taken away by the Sentinels. Rebound Tompkins. 1.27 to go in the first. Travis Misek and Brad Juno in for Northeastern. Racine, Racine brings it up. Whoop, double dribble there. Misek, yes, Travis Misek. Another bank shot, nice layup. And it's 8-8. Eight, eight. At 44 seconds to go in first. Banked in by Larock, and it's 10-8. 28 seconds to go in the first quarter. Young gives to Racine. John Racine with a bucket. It's a 10-10. Five seconds. Five seconds, I should have been a little closer on him. Somebody should have picked him up. Uncontested shot from about 19 feet. You don't want to foul him, but you want to bother him a little bit. 10-10 after one.
couple of players set to come in shortly for Northeastern as we start the second quarter, all tied up at 10-10. Almost rotating his players, trying to give everybody some playing time. But again, that's what it's, what it's all about. The wrap. 12-10. Three seconds. I'm going to do a double dribble call. Young brings it up. Seen with the shot? Yes. John Racine with a nice 16 footer. 12-12. Stolen by Juno, but taken back by the Sentinels. Cougars in a man-to-man, I think. Uh, travel, I think it should be nothing but man-to-man -man at this level. Again, they can learn to play zone later. Doesn't matter if they win here. Bill Covey. And Jesse Brooks in for the Cougars. And Travis Musak with his second bucket. 14-12, Northeastern leading. Juno brings it up. Over to Young. Young with a steal. The foul gives the Cougars the ball on the side. Ball comes into Juno. Four minutes, 34 seconds to go in half. Juno, oh, he was held that time. Juno stole the ball, Beaner grabbed him, and uh, referee Ryan making what I think is the right call. You can't accidentally hold somebody, an intentional foul is two shots. Juno hits the first. Intentional fouls are usually flagrant uh, fouls or something that really doesn't look uh, unintentional. But uh, there's nothing flagrant about that. He just grabbed Juno. Juno stole the ball from him. And he wanted to keep Juno from beating him, beating his man to the ball, so he grabbed him. But it's definitely under the umbrella of intentional fouls. And I think it was a correct call. Cougars get the ball. And Andy Young hits. And it's now make that 18, I was going to say 16, 18 to 12, 3.50 to go in the first period. I want to mention in all three games that we're doing tonight, hopefully we'll remember in all three games to mention it. Well, last night there was a slight snowstorm. I, the roads were slippery, but we didn't get much snow. And all the events for Northeastern were canceled. Uh, Everybody else uh, participated, everybody else played, but Northeastern's events were canceled. 
all the way back. And the two events that we had scheduled for coverage were hockey, which has not yet been rescheduled, Lake Placid at Northeastern, and the other event was bowling, Plattsburgh High at Northeastern. Have a Ticonderoga timeout. So the bowling, uh, we're very happy to say, is being covered. I am here covering this, obviously, and Sam Castine has gone to Westport, where the Shazy girls, unbeaten this year, are playing the equally unbeaten and uh, and favored the Westport Eagles. So it was a matchup we didn't want to miss, so Sam was down covering that. So that left the bowling match, which was rescheduled, up for grabs. So Jim Tierney, of course, our play-by-play -play man, is covering it. And he enlisted Skip Dooley to handle the camera. So we're very happy to say we're getting some coverage down there. 18-12, 307 to go in the half. Ticonderoga ball, if they ever get over here and take it out. And let's see. Starting five are back in. So Castine, Tompkins, Lucy, LeCount, and LeClaire are in. LeCount fouled. Tim LeCount hits the first. This is the second rebound controlled by the Sentinels. 19-12. Not only is that the year I was born, but also the score at the moment. Was on Castine. Brad Catlin at the line. Shooting two. that play to score the first basket of the game and they've used it again. Basket by Beener. We're down Lucy. 19-14, minute 52 to go. Basketball Lock. 1916. Tim LeCount will shoot. One and one. <laughs> they lined up all wrong here. The Cougars are on the inside. And they're supposed to be on the outside underneath the basket. It didn't really matter where the rebound came back, but uh, for both shots, the Northeastern guys load in, lined up underneath. I don't know if they did it deliberately or weren't thinking, and obviously the Ticonderoga players weren't thinking. Basket by LeCount makes it 22-16. We're down to 50 seconds to go in the first half. And basket by Beener. Ty Press turns the ball over. 
Stolen by Lucy. He's all alone. Didn't use the backboard. Came in from the front. And a basket by Marty Larocque. 22-20, 10 seconds. Lucy from about 16 hits. 24-20 as the horn. Go at halftime, Northeastern. Leading the visiting Ticonderoga Sentinels, 24-20. Time now for our halftime report by the lovely and talented and available. Well, maybe she's not available. She just left us here. Don't go away. We'll have our halftime report momentarily. Okay, we're back. She has composed herself. Here's Becky Swinton. NCCS, Jason Tompkins has four points, Ryan Lucy has two points, Tim LeCount has four points, Justin Castine has two points, John Racine has four points, Andy Young has two points, what was his name? <laughs> Travis Misek has four points, and Brad Juno has two points. Beaner has six points, Lorac has ten points, Mahalik has two points, and Catlin has two points for Ticonderoga. I don't know if you could tell, but that was strictly unrehearsed. So we'll be back with more CVAC Modified A action in a moment. They tried to do that with Frank Dumas holding Brad Juno, but the two of them together aren't 10 feet tall, so they had to get someone else to untangle that net. Might be trouble over the scoring table. Had we known that uh, Becky was going to break up when we mentioned that she was available, we certainly wouldn't have uh, gotten into our halftime report that way. We told her we were going to do that, and she, before the game, uh, was very agreeable, but uh, the moment of truth arrived, uh, she was overcome with emotion. We found out who 32 is. It's Matt Mahalik. He uh, was listed as number 20 originally, and they've changed it. 24-20 is our score. Northeastern leading with uh, Lionel Beamer. Beaner at the line. Twenty-four twenty-one. On the floor for the Cougars we have Lucy, LeCount, LeClaire, Zwart, and Tompkins. takes it away. Zwart. And the Sentinels take it back. Basket by Beaner. 24-23, Northeastern lead cut to one. A foul gives the Cougars the ball on the side. Zwart sticks with it. Nice shot. Basket John Zwart. He's at 26-23. Thank you. 
We'll see. Afraid of three seconds, gets it out. Rick Madison in for Ticonderoga as the JV players uh, head for the locker room. In and out. Let's see, here's to LeClaire. McCown dishes off to Tompkins. Count saves. Four and a half to go in the third quarter. Cougars up. Swart. Swart goes to LeCount. Round about 17, Lucy Shot is rebounded by the Sentinels. Nice feed, Tompkins is Wart. As 28-23. We're seen in for Lucy for Northeastern. And we have number three, Bill Belden. And let's see, number 12, Chris Montville. Brad Catlin will inbound it. That's for Ticonderoga. Also in, let's see, uh, number 42 is uh, Bino back in. Comes deep. Mahalik shot is red ball. Actually, it's purple ball. Ticonderoga purple and white colors. Right in Racine's hands, gets it up to LeClaire. To be off LeClaire. 239 to go in the third. Covey set to come in. Seen takes it away. Count rebounds. Throws it up. Zwart rebounds. Whoa, elbow. Is who me? So I've seen Bill Cartwright do it in the NBA. Probably the greatest elbow man I've ever seen in my days was a guy named, we used to call Arms, Norman Racine down there. He's a bigger one. Under the, he's a bigger one. 1963 graduate of St. Mary's. Okay. St. Mary's didn't win a lot of games in that old Catholic league against uh, schools that were a lot bigger and a lot tougher than St. Mary's was, but... Uh, Norman Racine controlled those boards. Um, I 
looks like there's going to be a little discussion on Back to the game, I guess. Twenty-eight, twenty-three, minute fifty to go in the third. Well, Rosine really dominated those boards for St. Mary's. Covey with a nice shot. Back in sixty-three. And when he got a rebound, uh, it was easy to tell it was his. So it'll be a shot down at the other end here. Now, when Lucien grabbed the rebound, he grabbed the rebound. I guess all they wanted to do was get the net down. It's not a foul shot. And that gives to Leclerc, to Racine. John Racine drives and drops it in. 30-23. And so we don't have to keep running our commercial asking for viewer patrons. Uh, I've been trying to do it during the ball games. And if you have not yet become a viewer patron and would like to see this programming continue on Hometown Cable on Channel 21 here in Champlain, by all means uh, consider becoming a viewer patron, $12 or more per year. I'll make you or your family viewer patrons. Cast on in for Tompkins. Red Ball. Your patrons are what we need to keep this program programming coming, and uh, we probably wouldn't be here right now except for the over 300 people who have responded thus far. Cannot cannot come across into the out of bounds area on defense. You gotta stay in bounds. And you get a warning. And next time you do it, it's technical. <laughs> Offensive foul. No basket. 32-23. So hometown cable can be reached at RR1 box 180 Champlain, New York. And we've even had people come up to us on the street and hand us money, and people at ball games have given us money. So if you forget and you see us on the street somewhere, don't be bashful. Come on over and give us your money and your name. If you don't know, if they don't know who you are, give us your name, and uh, we'll add you to our ever-growing list, and you'll be a part of keeping local programming coming on Channel 21. This type of thing isn't done everywhere. A lot of people think this is something provided by the cable system and it's done everywhere. This is a kind of unique. <laughs> Cast iron at the line. Shooting a one and one. Pitts, 33-23. Ten point lead for the Cougars, 20 seconds to go in the third. A player. Being trailed by a pack of Sentinels. Nice shot. Nice shot by Sean LeClaire. Makes it 35 23. Six seconds to go. Two seconds. At the end of three, Cougars have built up a 12 point 35 23 lead over the visiting Ticonderoga Sentinels. Ball comes in to Young. We have Young, uh, Lucy, 
Brooks, Isak, and Castine on the floor for the Cougars. Five twenty-three Northeastern leads as we start the fourth quarter. Ryan Lucy shooting a one and one. Second violation gives it back to Northeastern. Picked off by Lucy. It's up to Misek. Nice follow, rebound Castine. Nice follow there, however, by Larock. Brooks. Yes. Jesse Brooks. Cougars take it away, Lucy. Ryan Lucy at the line. We have uh, Covey coming in to replace uh, Castine. And uh, Juno set to come in to replace Lucy after the foul shots. Just trying to give everybody some playing time. <laughs> Northeastern turn on the jump ball. Ball comes to Brooks. Fifteen point lead for the Cougars. Young, Juno, Covey, Young again, and Andy Young puts it in. So on the fourth try, the Cougars put it in, and it's nice to see them getting four tries. It means they're hitting the boards. 40-23, 4-14, travel. Lane Trombley in for Northeastern. He replaces Brooks. All comes to Young. Nice pass to Misak. And another Ticonderoga timeout. So with 349 showing, the Cougars are leading 40-23. Yeah. Ball comes into Juno. Trombley back to help out. Gives it back to Juno. Up ahead to Covey. Covey all alone and he puts it in. It's 42-23. We have three and a half minutes to go in the game. Right. 
don't know, it's a trombley. New set. Down this side. And Brooks open again, puts it in 44 23, two and a half to go in the game. White ball. Brooks back in. For the Cougars, Covey, Juno, air ball, Misek rebounds, nope. And we're down to two minutes to go. The game was close early on, but the Cougars have just about doubled the Ticonderoga score. We're watching modified A basketball, Brooks with a steal. Brooks will shoot two. Forty-five to twenty-three. Forty-four twenty-three, actually. John Blue will toss it in. Gets it into cover. Nice feed to Brooks. Minute 15 remaining. Chris Montville shooting two. Juno gives to Misek. Down to a minute to go. Trombley puts it up. Down to 20 seconds. Seven seconds to go. That'll be it. Shoot the horn. There's a lead horn. Throw the final, Northeastern Clinton 44, Ticonderoga Sentinels 23, and that's the way it was in CPAC Modified A Boys Basketball on this Thursday, January 10th, 1991 at Northeastern Clinton Central School in Champlain.